so we're here at Fine Shade Woods and we're going to go to the wildlife hide to see if we can take some photographs of birds and wildlife with the D100, a camera that was made in 2002 and would cost you the princely slum of nearly £1,800. In terms of specification, the Nikon D100 is starting to show its age a bit. You've got a Can 900 autofocusing system, and it's still reasonably snappy, but it's not going to keep up with modern day DSLRs. In terms of dynamic range, it is fairly limited, but there is some scope for pulling up the shadows in Lightroom. Handling wise, the camera handles nicely, it's just everything that you expect from a Nikon. The screen on the back is pretty useless because it's quite small, but all of the controls are to hand and you can change the ISO reasonably quickly with the dial on the top of the camera. Your ISO range is fairly limited, it goes from 200 to 1600, but it's also got an extended range of 32 to 6400, although you probably don't want to use those because the noise does really start to creep in. You've got an APS-C size sensor and you've got 6 megapixels. So you need to make sure that you get your framing right because you haven't got an awful lot of room for cropping post-process. The camera takes compact flash memory cards and you can use anything up to 2 gigabyte before the 2.0 software version but you need to upgrade your firmware to that version if you want to use anything larger than that. The Nikon D100 uses the Nikon F mount lenses and you, these will work with the Type G, Ds, the AFS. It works with some of the AIS lenses but you cannot use the older none AI lenses on the camera. So in the end then, is it worth buying a camera for £34? Well, Yes, I mean it can still take photos and if you can pick one of these up for £34 then why not? It's cheap and you'll still have fun with it. No, it's not going to beat modern day cameras and maybe even not beat some mobile phone cameras today. But you can change lenses on it, you can get a shallower depth of field than you can with a, with a phone camera. And it still shoots photos as you can tell. You may need to do some extra work in Photoshop to get the most out of it and you want to shoot by RAW files rather than JPEGs. And it's going to be slow getting them off the camera because it's only a USB 1.1 so it's very very slow. But at the end of the day it's 34 quid, and you can't get a lot these days for £34. So maybe a DSLR is a good purchase.